This is the ninth consecutive commencement that has taken place at West Point with our nation at war. This time of war began in Afghanistan, a place that may seem as far away from this peaceful bend in the Hudson River as anywhere on earth. The war began only because our own cities and civilians were attacked by violent extremists who plotted from a distant place. And it continues only because that plotting persists to this day. For many years, our focus was on Iraq. And year after year, our troops faced a set of challenges there that were as daunting as they were complex. A lesser army might have seen its spirit broken. But the American military is more resilient than that. Our troops adapted. They persisted. They partnered with coalitions and Iraqi counterparts. And through their competence and creativity and courage, we are poised to end our combat mission in Iraq this summer. And as we end the war in Iraq, though, we are pressing forward in Afghanistan. Six months ago, I came to West Point to announce a new strategy for Afghanistan and Pakistan. And I stand here humbled by the knowledge that many of you will soon be serving in harm's way. I assure you, you will go with the full support of a proud and grateful nation. We face a tough fight in Afghanistan. Any insurgency that is confronted with a direct challenge will turn to new tactics. And from Marja to Kandahar, that is what the Taliban has done through assassination and indiscriminate killing and intimidation. Moreover, any country that has known decades of war will be tested in finding political solutions to its problems and providing governance that can sustain progress and serve the needs of its people. So this war has changed over the last nine years. But it's no less important than it was in those days after 9-11. We toppled the Taliban regime. Now we must break the momentum of a Taliban insurgency and train Afghan security forces. We have supported the election of a sovereign government. Now we must strengthen its capacities. We brought hope to the Afghan people. Now we must see that their country does not fall prey to our common enemies. Cadets, there will be difficult days ahead. We will adapt. We will persist. And I have no doubt that together with our Afghan and international partners, we will succeed in Afghanistan. You've answered the call. You and all who wear America's uniform remain the cornerstone of our national defense, the anchor of global security. And through a period when too many of our institutions have acted irresponsibly, the American military has set a standard of service and sacrifice that is as great as any in this nation's history. To all the families here, especially all the moms and dads, this day is a tribute to you as well. The decision to come to West Point was made by your sons and daughters, but it was you who instilled in them a spirit of service that has led them to this hallowed place in a time of war. So on behalf of the American people, thank you for your example and thank you for your patriotism. Class of 2010, today is your day, a day to celebrate all that you've achieved in the finest tradition of the soldier scholar, and to look forward to the important service that lies ahead. You've pushed yourself through the agony of beast barracks, the weeks of training in rain and mud, and I'm told more inspections and drills than perhaps any class before you. Along the way, I'm sure you faced a few moments when you asked yourself, what am I doing here? I have those moments sometimes. <laughs> You've trained for the complexities of today's missions, knowing that success will be measured not merely by performance on the battlefield, but also by your understanding of the cultures and traditions and languages in the place where you serve. You've reached out across borders with more international experience than any class in academy history. 
You've not only attended foreign academies to forge new friendships, you've welcomed into your ranks cadets from nearly a dozen countries. You've challenged yourselves intellectually, in the sciences, in the humanities, in history, in technology. You've achieved a standard of academic excellence that is without question, tying the record for the most postgraduate scholarships of any class in West Point history. Years from now, when you return here, when for you the shadows have grown longer, I have no doubt that you will have added your name to the Book of History. I have no doubt that we will have prevailed in the struggles of our times. I have no doubt that your legacy will be an America that has emerged stronger in a world that is more just. Because we are Americans, and our destiny is never written for us, it is written by us, and we are ready to lead once more. Thank you. May God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America.